वंचकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावने वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासाड़ी गौर भक्त वृंद Today we're going to study Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela chapter 23 verses 14 and 15 Adhau shraddha tata sadhu sango tabhajana kriya tato nartani vritti syat tato nishta ruchistata अथ शक्तिस्तो भावस्तुदाक्षी श्रद्धा कानमय प्रेरण प्रादुर्भाव भविक्रम ट्रांसलेशन इन द बिगिनिंग देर मस्ट बी फेथ वेन वन बिकम्स इंटरेस्टेड इन असोसिएटिंग विथ प्योर डिवोरीज Thereafter, one is initiated by the spiritual master and executes the regulative principles under his orders. Thus, one is freed from all unwanted habits and becomes firmly fixed in devotional service. Thereafter, one develops taste and attachment. This is the way of sadhana bhakti, the execution of devotional service according to the regulative principles. Gradually. emotions intensify and finally there is an awakening of love this is the gradual development of love of godhead for the devotee interested in krishna consciousness this a very beautiful verse which gives the stages in which one should go through in spiritual life and uh, it is fairly easy i believe to measure yourself where you're at and there are two main stages one is called sadhana bhakti which means uh, regulative or under rules and regulations and then there is a uh, spontaneous bhakti or raganuga bhakti which is not so regulated is based on spontaneous feelings of love so the first part is in the beginning there must be faith and the, the sanskrit word is shraddha so This happens when you hear this kind of video series or someone speaking about God in general that you have faith on the words of Jesus for example or Buddha or Krishna and you start to become interested in spiritual life so there is some faith that oh they're talking about the spiritual world and all these things that are require some faith and it's not just something that we have material proof So there has to be some faith in the beginning that um maybe God does exist or because an atheist will say no prove me show me God I want to see him and all this stuff. So many many times the path of uh, spiritual life requires little faith in the beginning just to to try it out. Then the second stage is uh association with pure devotees which is called also sadhu sangha in india sadhu is a very common word to refer to a spiritual man so and this is also happening here if i'm talking about spiritual topics and you're listening to these videos daily and asking questions and things like that that is considered association with devotees but it usually refers traditionally to going to a place where you can be associated with several other devotees in a in a community a kind of like an, an environment which is protected from envious people or the nasty things of this world you know this is uh, sadhu sangha then the next stage is called bhajana kriya which is performance of devotional service to krishna and it has to do with uh, surrendering to the spiritual master and accepting initiation so when you're associated with devotees then uh, they will all talk about uh, spiritual master and spiritual master 
there are several kinds of spiritual master and well, it's a long story but eventually you make the choice that all oh, this spiritual life really feels good and I can feel God within my heart by following this process I can feel my mind is clear I am much more happy and this is such a wonderful lifestyle so I want to do this for the rest of my life for a long time so then one takes to the process of initiation which is just like marriage or something that I, I just uh, dedicate myself to spiritual life that's all uh, not uh, nothing weird or strange it's just I want to love God and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life so one accepts uh, a spiritual master and accepts this process of initiation then the third the fourth stage is anarthanivriti the diminishing of all unwanted habits this is a this is a rough spot in spiritual life everything else so far is pretty sweet maybe difficult to renounce to some bad habits but anarthanivriti means really bad habits or bad uh, how can i say it like emotional things that are very deep in the heart like traumas from childhood or things that you've always been uh, traumatized or you had some problem with anger or being patient or i don't know whatever there's so many things to to find fault in in one's spiritual life so all these things suddenly start to come out by the process of spiritual practice as you get closer to god god is extremely pure so he he reveals by his getting closer all your faults and you start to see yourself and you're like oh i'm really bad oh i don't oh. You know, all these bad things come out and well it's, it's unwanted things so things like lust greed envy all, all these things come out very strongly you see yourself having them and you're able to discard them there's a little rough patch in the, in the path and uh, thereafter the the next stage is called nishta which means firm faith for many this this anartha nivriti is a big big wall because there's so many bad qualities and to to take them down takes a while and a lot of determination but one once that wall is destroyed or uh, overcome then very strong faith are, is established this is nishta one feels like okay this this path is really good the spiritual life is is a wonderful thing so there's nothing nothing that will deviate you from saying oh maybe spiritual life is boring so i should do something else no 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 it becomes such a, a strong thing as a firm the one-pointed fixed determination and then the next stage is called the ruchi which means taste uh, it's a, a, i don't know there's no simple way to explain it but just like when you cook you don't just mix ingredients randomly to have a nice dish you have to know exactly how much of each spice and how much time to put under the heat and all these things to have a nice tasty dish so in a similar way when we're talking about love and offering things to god and things like that you have to know exactly how much to put of each of these ingredients of love and how to interact with others you have to for example if you have an altar where you have the, the form of god you decorate it you have to have taste to, to make a beautiful arrangement and or you make music to make beautiful music it's about taste and that is another stage that the one becomes very particular about a certain taste and then asakti attachment which means when you start to even in this world we see when you start to love someone or to be with someone then you start to get attached just by being uh, with them a lot so the same thing happens with God one starts to become attached to God that in the beginning maybe if I forget God uh, and remember him once or twice a week it's not so bad but then as you make more progress forgetting God is you can't really do that for long you have to oh yes I love God and remember Krishna or his activities 
or the name of God. So this is uh, another stage. One becomes attached to that. And then bhava, emotion or affection. Well, it's hard to do the English translation. But uh, uh, this is good. Gradually emotions intensify. So as the attachment increases, then the emotions of love start to become very intense. And one starts to experience a, a little bit of ecstatic symptoms. Things like crying, shivering, uh, things like that. Many false religions will do show, you know, that, oh, I'm in ecstasy, I'm in love of God, and then do this public show just to attract people. But the, that is not the, 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 how it should be done. If one is experiencing ec ecstatic symptoms and things like that, it should be kept uh, private. It's not something for public display. Uh, it's not for selling or converting people and things like that. Sometimes it happens it and, and it's a spontaneous thing, but uh, it's not a show. <laughs> it's not made for that purpose. Sometimes it will happen. We see even great souls that even like Srila Prabhupada, sometimes he, he would cry when, while giving a lecture. It's not that he was planning to make a show. It's just sometimes the emotions are overwhelming. So it happens, uh, but it's not like a business mood. And then finally, there is an awakening of love, which is, the word is called prema, love of Godhead. This is, uh, this stage of, uh, after Narta Nivriti, up to, up to, uh, after attachment, there is the stage of Raga Nuga Bhakti, spontaneous devotional service. And then Bhava and Prema, the last ones, are part of this Raga Nuga Bhakti. And that means that the rules and regulations are not so strict. Like in the beginning, for example, one must, I don't know, wake up early before sunrise. It is very important because one becomes uh, much more focused to chant the name of God while sunrise is happening. So it's a very, very important thing to follow in the beginning. But someone more advanced doesn't really need to do that because they're always thinking of God. So it's not such an important rule and so it changes it, one can relax a little bit because the love is already awakened and this is uh, in the later stages very rare but uh, at, th at this point in raga nuga bhakti bhava prema things like that the emotions are completely intense and especially in the stage of prema there's all kinds of ecstatic symptoms like crying, the, the hair stands on hand, goosebumps and fainting and, and I mean that's the real thing. To be honest, very few people will achieve this stage of of bhava and prema, not because it's hard or impossible to achieve or something like that, but just because very few people are capable of of uh, having enough strength and force to overcome the first part, what we said, anartha nivritti, all those stages in the beginning are, are, are a big challenge for, for most. But uh, it is possible and in my opinion, the Vedic way is really the only path that even hints to those very high elevated states of consciousness like bhava and prema. Most religions will just settle for, well, just do some chants or live in a monastery and just, just be peaceful like that. But uh, not really, they don't really go deep into ecstatic emotions that you're crying out of love because it's so beautiful. This is only available thanks to Lord Chaitanya because he's got himself and he came to teach this process of pure love. And it has to do with dancing and music and singing the name of God in, in a group, in a big group, and with beautiful musical arrangements. And I mean, the other day I saw a video of the monks, monks in Mount Athos, or Athos, I don't know how it's called, and they don't use musical instruments, they are like Christian Orthodox. Very interesting. But you could see that they were dry because their love couldn't really express that that bhava, that prema, that uh, pure emotions, spontaneous emotions. Like this is spontaneity is really very, 
very unique thing that is available in the Vedic way because singing and dancing is such a beautiful thing and one can express this is spontaneous love very nicely. It, uh, it is hard to do also because it means there has to be expert musicians, expert singer, and one has to know the art of devotional dancing. And so it's a pretty high art. But there is a huge advantage because you know what to aim for. And this, uh, what I saw in this monastery, the monks are very well established in the mode of goodness and they remember Christ all day and it's very nice, very beautiful. But I could see that they were missing that element of spontaneous love, that, uh, that only uh, uh, something like Sankirtan, which is this congregational chanting, can provide. So these are the stages. And it will take maybe a lifetime for one individual to go through all of these. And as a matter of fact, most, most spiritual practitioners will only reach up to the fourth stage or the fifth stage. They don't really reach the latter stages. It's, that's the situation in the world today. I believe it can be changed and it, it's, it's a belief because uh, it's not very visible today in the world. It is a big, uh, big problem, even religious organizations and they have become corrupt and all, all these higher stages are a little bit hidden. They're not easily accessible, but they are possible and we have well, all the things that are required to achieve them, it's just we need good intelligence and, and to start a new project, a new community that won't have so many errors that are, uh, cripple most organizations in the past. That has to do with uh, building communities that individuals are independent and they don't have to like surrender everything. In the past, the idea was that one found a guru and one would surrender all possessions and serve that guru. And that was very nice then, but now uh, the thing has gotten so corrupt that instead of surrendering to a guru, it's uh, this corporation. And then one surrenders to this corporation and then one becomes completely dependent. And, and this has created total chaos. And the idea is that anyone who practices spiritual life should be self-sufficient, independent individual. And with that strength of being self-sufficient and independent, then join a community of other like-minded, independent persons who choose to love God and follow this process. That is the actual way that it works. It's just that today, unfortunately, is not very visible. But it's not impossible. It can be done. And we are working towards that goal. And soon I will post the video that in which I will show the community that I'm living in and to invite others to join. It's, it's located in Mexico. And it has all the facilities for spiritual development. Very nice, peaceful place. One can... Uh, develop a business if one wants or needs a source of income or one can just rent if already one has savings and just join and live in a peaceful place develop spiritual life it is it is uh, traveling to mexico which is another country like that so it has to be planned and thought very carefully Re recently mexico has been having lots of problems with uh, violence with drug dealers in, in the north part of Mexico. So caution has to be taken and all these things. But uh, it doesn't have to be this particular community. One can join a spiritual community that is based on those principles. I already have some experience, so I know what works and what doesn't work. And uh, I know for sure that if you want to join a community and the mood is that you have to give it all your possessions, it's just not going to work. You have to remain independent and always have the ability to say, I don't do this. This is beyond my 
capability or I feel offended or whatever and always be able to draw the line and keep your own spiritual independence and material too. Not that we are greedy or whatever, but it's just healthy. It's just so much better. And these uh, stages will take a long time, <laughs> as I was saying. It's not something that, oh, I'm in the second or the fifth stage in a month. It will take years and uh, depending on your uh, determination, how fast you will move from one to the other. But uh, it's, it's a beautiful path. And so far where I'm at, I can tell you that there's not, a, it's, I don't regret a, a single thing. It's very beautiful and it only gets better and better. You just have to know the science. You have to educate yourself to know how all these things go. For most people right now, the challenge is to find the community to find the community because living in the city or living in, in a place where the, all the family members are eating meat or are unfavorable, that's not very nice. And this is why we're working today to, to create this community to be able to receive guests and to experience spiritual life without all these hindrances and rise in this spiritual path. If you have any comments or questions, please visit our website, thevedicway.org. Thank you. Hare Krishna.